Hey, I'm Stefan Papadakis. We're here at our shop in Carson, California. I'm gonna give you guys a tour of our toolbox. This is the same toolbox we work on the cars here at the shop. We also bring it all around pretty much the whole world. So this box here has pretty much everything we need to assemble a whole car. Pull an engine out, transmission, gear ratio changes, all that kind of stuff is here in this box. Starting from the top to the bottom, you know, magnetic trays are always good. Uh, if you do put tools or parts on the car, put the magnetic tray on the car and put everything in the magnetic tray. That way everything's in one place and you know that if you just pull the magnetic tray off, all the parts and hardware and everything uh, will come off of the car and you didn't leave anything there. We've got the metric wrenches and standard wrenches. On the import cars like the Toyotas that we work on, they have all metric hardware, but a lot of stuff that we fabricate has standard hardware. So we need the fractional wrenches as well. The way we have it set up here is we use magnets on the lid of the toolbox. And this allows, once the toolbox is open, we have access to all of the different wrenches and the top is open so we have access to all of the sockets, ratchets, extensions. All the stuff that we use most of the time is available here right in the top. So we don't have to keep opening drawers, closing them and, and looking for everything. And instead of using the top of the toolbox as a workspace, I've got this Pit Pal workbench thing. And basically between the open toolbox and this table, we've got everything that we can efficiently work on the cars. And the way this is set up is I'll grab a tool, pull a part off the engine or the car and set it on the table. And tools never get left on the car. So the problem is if you're taking tools and when you're done with it, you stick it in your pocket or you leave it on the car, like it's easy to forget that and the car drives away or someone else or you sit on the wrench and tear interior or something like that. So the tools never stay on the car. They always go on the cart. And that way it's easy to clean up as well. You know where everything is. Or like for us when we're racing, Sometimes you have like this small amount of time to work on the car. So you want to make sure that all the tools are in one place, not on the car. That way when you finish working on it, you close the hood and the thing's gone. You're not having to find tools and stuff that you may have left on like the windshield wiper cowl or the valve cover or whatever. So that's just like best practices to not leave, you know, tools under the hood. We've got metrics, standards, deep sockets and shallows. And then we've got like a miscellaneous tray. So this Matco toolbox, in, this is not, we don't have any support by Matco or any of these tool companies. This is just stuff that we've bought over time that we found works best for us. Um, so this box is a Matco box. It works uh, really well because it's got a bunch of drawers and it's got the open top. We've had some toolboxes where it was just two or three drawers at the top and then open in the bottom, but it ends up just being super messy in the bottom. We found that more drawers actually worked better for us. Uh, the other thing that we did right when we got the box is we threw the original casters, the wheels in the trash, and then we got these high-end uh, ball bearing ones. The toolbox gets rolled so much, not just around the shop, but into the race car trailer, out of the trailer. Sometimes we'll roll it all the way from the pit at the racetrack all the way to the hot pit area. So we need some really good wheels on the toolbox. So the left side of the box is all the flathead screwdrivers. So we know if you want a flathead screwdriver, you go to the left side and on the right side is going to be Phillips. And then we've got the pry bars and then some of the really long screwdrivers hanging there as well, which was backwards. This actually belongs on the other side. The thing is we have so many people that use this toolbox, uh, you know, things have to go, they have to have a place, right? Everybody has to know where the tools go. That way when the next person goes to use the toolbox that they can find the tool easily. This little nut driver, so the nut driver has a quarter inch end on it and you can put all the different quarter inch sockets on it and turn those into nut drivers. Actually the most popular one that we use is for like the hose clamps which is a 5 16 and actually have a separate 5 16 nut driver just for hose clamps. We also have at least a couple of tape measures. So many millions of things you can do with tape measures. If you lose one or someone else is already using one uh, it's always great to have two. What they call tap holders and this is a tap holder set with a bunch of different sizes depending on the tap that you're going to use and these are really cool because instead of having to use like a, the T handle for the tap sometimes in the cars you know if the engine or the whatever like something's installed but you have to throw a tap through it um, you don't have room for that T handle so you can actually put a ratchet on this tool holder and then the tap goes inside of it and then you can use the tap that way in a, in a confined space. We've got a selection of uh, extensions of course um, pretty standard deal, you know, everybody knows extensions. 
ratchet wrenches. So the ratchet wrenches, you can get into tighter areas where you not, might not be able to with a ratchet. We've got several pry bars hanging on the side here. Used to use screwdrivers quite a bit for prying, but after continuing to break the screwdrivers, finally, you know, spent some money and got some actual uh, real pry bars. And these are great because got a couple different sizes. You know, it's just one of those tools like, you know, pry bars, hammers, it's just something that it's just like the go-to when something doesn't want to come apart or go back together. The other thing we got up here is a pyrometer or a mini temp gun. So this is laser. So these are really cool, not only getting like track temperature or sometimes do tire temperatures, we've got a better tool that we'll get to in a little bit, the pyrometer. These are really good for, you point at the headers on the car. So let's say the car has a misfire and you want to narrow down which cylinder it is, you'll actually laser the temp of each one of the, the primaries coming out of the engine. And one of them's gonna be cold, which is the one with the misfire. And you can start your diagnostics on that cylinder because you know that one's cold, it's not firing properly. Always dropping bolts. Try not to, but you know it happens. It's always nice to have a little extension magnet. Magnet's good. This is the long one. Top drawer is kind of like that miscellaneous drawer where stuff just sort of ends up. So we've got these dividers. We've got normal picks and uh, little screwdrivers, little file sets. You never know when you have to fabricate something or just make something fit. A lot of pens, uh, always a lot of Sharpies. This is for putting decals on. Put a decal on, this is the squeegee for that. So blue Loctite, red Loctite, another blue Loctite. This is the, uh, the thinner stuff. So race cards, you Loctite safety wire. Like you have to make sure that stuff doesn't fall off. So we also have a selection of AN wrenches. So for all of the fittings, all the, the custom braided hoses and stuff, uh, we use the aluminum AN wrenches. We've got a little Zeus tool here. So for the Zeuses are those little like panel fasteners. And uh, these are special tools just for that. Um, silicone, O-ring lube. This stuff's great. Uh, in, when you're assembling something with O-rings, uh, this is a silicone based lube that you put on the O-ring and everything slides together really nicely. We've got a bunch of these burr tools, carbide burr tools that we'll use to grind stuff. Center punches, hole saw. This is Teflon tape, so I always keep a lot of uh, new razor blades. Could be peeling off a decal or peeling off some old gasket material, cutting something, who knows? Razor blades are just always being used. And they get dull pretty quick, so we always want to have uh, a bunch of fresh ones. Safety wire and pliers. And we've been, even used these in the, in the past for like even broken parts. We had a part in like in the exhaust, like a wastegate lever broke off and we needed to, to really quickly between rounds get the thing fastened back together again and we didn't have the time to weld it so use the safety wire tied it all together and the thing went off and uh, actually I think it won the event that night in an area where a zip tie would melt or isn't strong enough the safety wire is strong and it'll deal with really high heat always good to have a really big plier and you never know when you're just going to need to grab something and put a bunch of torque on it got a couple of spanner wrenches so if you work on cars that have coilover suspension, these are the tools that you need versus having like a screwdriver and a hammer and trying to get that nut loose. The special spanner wrenches are designed to, uh, to not mess up those aluminum collars. So this is what's called an axle boot clamp tool. What do you call this, an axle boot clamp tool? This tool you use to tighten the clamps for axle boots. And instead of having like special size clamps for every single axle boot. You can use universal clamps, and this is what you use to, to tighten it. Snap ring pliers, so we've got a selection of those for all kinds of different sizes. Flush cutters, so we use a lot of zip ties on the race car, and the flush cutters are great because instead of having, this is what sucks about zip ties, right? If you cut it wrong, they turn into like something that'll cut you. And when you use a flush cut, you can actually cut them flush, and they're not like sharp or dangerous, so, that's a rule around the shop working on any of our cars is if you cut a zip tie, make sure you use the flush cut because we want to make sure that nobody gets cut on the, the sharp edge of a zip tie. Use a lot of race fuel and we get our race fuel in these giant 50 gallon drums, 55 gallon drums. And this is a special wrench to open the cap on those drums. This is great. One side is for the big cap and the other side is for the little vent. I love these side cutters. This is like the super high leverage snap-on uh, side cutter um, or dikes, depends on what you call it. But this is for cutting all kinds of stuff that you need to get a bunch of leverage on. So these are, these are heavily used. Another favorite tool is this crescent wrench, this specific crescent wrench, because it opens really wide. It keeps going. 
and it's really narrow, and it's pretty small. Always have to have some, uh, some vice grips. Little tip, when you store these in anything that moves around a lot, make sure you clamp them down. The toolbox vibrates so much in the trailer, when these are left open, what happens is all the screws and everything vibrate out and then you'll open the box one day and your, your, your vice grip is sitting there in pieces. So the next drawer, we've got, so in this drawer we've actually got a lot of tire pressure gauges. We've got one, two, three, four tire pressure gauges. It's always good to have tire pressure gauges. You can't be at the racetrack and run out of tire pressure gauges, get one lost, you have to have a backup, something breaks. Sometimes when it's like questionable whether the thing's accurate or not, you want to compare it to a couple other ones. Little digital caliper. So if you want to check measurements, so like our clutch discs, we can check the measurements on it, the, the exact thicknesses. Clutch alignment tool. So this bad boy, uh, when you're putting a new clutch in, you want to make sure that it's all aligned properly. So when the transmission goes in, it's, it's perfect. So this pretends like it's the transmission input shaft and you put the clutch splines on here, you put this inside the pilot bearing, you bolt the whole cover in and then you, when you pull this out, everything's lined up perfectly and then the transmission will go on uh, super easy. Uh, we've got a timing light here for uh, checking the ignition timing. So in here, we've got a digital angle finder, digital level. So let's see what the toolbox is. Toolbox is sitting at one degree. So you want this if you're checking like pinion angles or you know anything you need to know the angle of. So this dirty yellow thing is actually a Kevlar sleeve. So this is good if you have a hot car and you need to reach into somewhere, you actually put this on and you can get in there and you can try to use your wrench or whatever and not get burnt by a header or whatever's hot. Torque wrenches, always have to have a few of these. We've got different ranges. So this is a 10 to 70 foot pound. This particular torque wrench is almost always just used for lug nut torque. So it lives in the box with its own extension and socket. Half inch drive, flex ratchet. What do we got? Voltmeter, multimeter. So if you want to check voltage on something or uh, continuity. So continuity is if something's connected. Electrical, gremlin, diagnostics. Uh, this is great. So when we pull the drive shaft out of the transmission, this little cap goes in where the drive shaft goes in, and when you pull the transmission out, it doesn't allow the oil to come out. Next drawer, we've got a compression gauge set. This will screw into where the spark plug goes. They connect to the little fitting right here, and you crank over the engine, and the gauge will go up and show you how much compression the engine's making. And you can do all of the cylinders in the engine and see if there's one of them that's a little bit low and see if you've got an issue. Uh, like if you're having a misfire or something, you can find out if you've got a problem with something mechanical in the engine uh, with the compression tester. We've got another way to testing also the engines is with what they call a leak down tester. So this one, this tube gets screwed in where the spark plug goes. The fitting attaches to this regulator and gauge setup. Shop air or compressor goes into the inlet of the regulator. You'll turn it up to 100 PSI and you'll see how many PSI it's retaining. So if it's down to like 96, 98%, or 98 PSI, you've got 96 or 98% of it is being held in, so you've got a good engine. But it's at 50% is leaking out somewhere. So it might be out of the valves or the piston rings or somewhere. So you'll go around and try to, to diagnose uh, where that issue is. Silicone, always plenty of silicone. You never know you're gonna need it. I really like this Permatech stuff, uh, ultra gray. The modern engines don't use like oil pan gaskets. Um, or anything. So in the front covers, there's no gaskets there anymore. It uses the silicone. So we go through a lot of this stuff. This chain wrench is amazing. So we'll use these on our crank pulleys. Sometimes the bolts are so tight, like even impacts won't take them off. Um, and something that moves like your crank, the crank pulley, you have to hold it with something when you put the breaker bar and try to loosen the nut. So that's what these chain wrenches are for. And we actually put some little yellow dots uh, on the proper diameter and the adjustment that we, uh, that we would use for our engine. That way it's just quick to use. This one is an oil filter cutter. So you put the oil filter inside the cutter, you turn the cutter and it'll basically, it's like a can opener for an oil filter and you can get the, the element out and see the inside of it. Cause you know, normally they're sealed, but race engine and even a street engine is kind of good to do. You can pull apart the filter look at the element and you can analyze and see if there's any particles in there, like maybe bearing material or, you know, who knows what. So you can actually see what's flowing through the filter in the engine. Uh, big breaker bar. So these are great. Uh, 
for any really tight <laughs> bolt or nut that has to come off. Um, the problem with using a ratchet for really tight hardware is you can break the ratchet mechanism. So that's why you want a breaker bar. Uh, they're much stronger and they're longer as well uh, than a ratchet. Pretty much every car has ball joints. So we've got a couple of ball joint separators. This is like the old school one where it just wedges in between the control arm and like the, the spindle or whatever, or the upright. And it just wedges in there and it gets that taper to pop out on the ball joint. The ones I like more are this style. This is a, a special, this was a Honda tool, um, but it works on pretty much every car with a, a ball joint. This slides in where the boot goes on the ball joint and it doesn't damage the boots like those wedge style ones do. So you loosen the nut, but you leave the nut on there. This pushes against the nut and this pushes against the top of the control arm and you tighten this until it's parallel. And then when you tighten this, it wedges this closed and it'll pop the wedge the tapered part of the ball joint out and that's the easiest I think cleanest way of getting the ball joints is with this tool. So in this drawer we've got this is the most important stuff the zip ties. So the zip ties are really good for so many different things uh, we'll hold body panels on if the car gets you know hit and we have to do like a really quick fix the zip ties work really well for that we use like these stainless steel tang the tang is that little part that holds the whole zip tie in together really love these zip ties. Uh, gaffers tape this is often used in uh, like film production, but these are like, it's a, this is like a soft type of tape that uh, works on pretty much every material, including fabric. Uh, so gaffer's tape is really good. We got some painter's tape, uh, hammers of course, big hammers, medium hammers, sledgehammer, rubber mallet, drill bits. So this is a whole set of drill bits. Pyrometer, so this is a temperature gauge. And this is used for checking the temperature of tires. This little probe here pushes into the rubber on the tire after you're out there on the track. And you can check the temperature of the tires uh, on different points of the tire. And you can start getting your alignment set up perfectly. And also make sure that you're not overheating the tires or make sure you're getting them up to temp as well. Got a cotter pin set here. We don't use many cotter pins on the race cars anymore, uh, but this is just good stuff to have, uh, especially if you're working on like street type cars. Uh, always put the cotter pins back in anywhere you pull one out. These are a couple of the caps that we use for the intercooler. So when we put the intercooler tubing off, this will go into the intercooler and it stops any kind of like debris or anything from coming in uh, while we're working on it. Got a little tire filler here. So, you know, airline goes in here, fill up the tires. All right, so here we've got the last drawer. Again, we're working with trying to get efficient and have every, as much as possible in the box. So we've got a lot down here. So we've got a couple of snap-on guns. These are the old style ones. These are not even lithium ion batteries. This is a, a half in chuck drill. We've had this for years, it's worked really well. This is the charger for the battery. The same battery goes on the flashlight. It's the same battery for the half inch impact. So we rarely use air impacts anymore. We mostly just use the electric ones. The same charger, same batteries will go through between all of them. Got another spare battery here. These are so old actually, we've actually pulled them apart and on eBay you can get the replacement uh, NICAD batteries for the inside of them and they've actually worked pretty well. This is probably shoot, 20 years old. So this is old half inch impact. When the electric one won't take off something, this is the next step that we go to is the air half inch drive impact. So this is a disc cutter, barrel sander, another disc cutter, a 90 degree sander, this, uh, a die grinder with a carbide insert so we can grind stuff to make clearance or make holes bigger. These are rarely used. So I've got a 3 8 and a quarter inch air ratchet. Cutoff wheels. And these are the cutoff wheels that go on to this holder. Look here we've got a whole bag of sanding items. You just unscrew this. This is a scotch Bright version. Now we can go get an 80 grit. That screws on there. Now we can go and sand with an 80 grit. And 2x4. 2x4 is used for, I don't know, you want to drill through something but not into the ground. You set that piece on the 2x4, you drill through it. Your car's rolling away, you stick it behind the tire, stops the car from rolling away. Like the 2x4 is used for so many things. You want to hammer something, but you don't want to damage the ground. You put the part on there, you hammer it. Like the 2x4 is used so many different ways. Got to have one of these in the toolbox. So thanks for watching guys. I had a lot of fun building the video. 
Uh, it's kind of videos that I wish you know I had 20 years ago when I was learning to work on cars. Uh, but you know, I still watch videos now on you know new tools, how to use them, you know how to do stuff. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if I miss something here and you have any questions, comment below. And if you want to see you know what kind of videos you want to see in the future, please put a comment below. Uh, thanks again for watching. And uh, shirts and stuff are for sale on the PapadakisRacing.com website, and we have some other gear on there as well. So uh, thanks again. See you in future videos.